Welcome to episode 301 of the Help Me With Hip podcast. Yes, it is a 301 redirect. <laughs> <laughs> For all you nerds out there. Uh, no, we're not going to redirect you today. We're going to be talking about basic cyber hygiene. That's right. Brush your teeth and wash your tail. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to tell you what that means in the cyber world, because it is a fairly new term. And, you know, even though we've mentioned it several times over the past few weeks, um, yeah. you know, what do we really mean when we say that? Mm -hmm. so, some people don't know. <laughs> be good. It'd yeah. Be good. So I think we'll uh, we'll spell that out for you. Help you uh, solve some cyber issues by improving your cyber hygiene so you don't stank. Because <laughs> believe me, there's been many of people's um networks we walk into and it stinks <laughs> it's pretty bad yeah um, just think of it as you walk into a hotel room that you know no stay motel versus <laughs> a luxury one which one would you rather stay in there's the, your cyber hygiene the, the no tail motel <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no tail well let's don't go down that path you know both of us will get in trouble yeah uh, i have a funny no tell story so uh, i'm traveling with a, a friend of mine and uh, you know we're both exhausted uh, we want to stop and sleep somewhere but we, we don't need a place for the entire night it's it's middle of the day we've been driving all night so we literally want to sleep three to four hours and get up and get back on the road and so the guy says to me, let's stop up here and see if they'll just give us a room for a few hours. I'm like, I'm not walking in there with you <laughs> asking for an hourly rate on a room. No. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. <laughs> uh, That's just wrong. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that brings us to the hippo boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> virtual Great edition segue. yeah i know <laughs> you don't have to stay anywhere because it's a virtual edition there you go <laughs> uh, august 17 18 and 19 it will be virtual so you can stay right where you at but uh the next tip of boot camp is coming up we already have people signing up for it super exciting uh we are we're doing this uh virtual thing pretty good i think we've got a lot nailed down on how this works yeah We'll have to figure out what we're going to do in 2022. Oh, goodness. Oh, let's not yeah. worry about that right now. <laughs> I was going to say, don't start freaking me out already. <laughs> I know. It's far enough. It's far enough. Yep. So if you want to know more information about that, head on over to thehippabootcamp.com for all the information and to get registered early because there are perks to getting in early. Yes, there are. All righty. Very good. Thanks again to our donors. Make sure you leave us a review if you like this show. If you don't like it, just don't leave anything and don't tell anybody. Just quietly go away. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do like it, tell everybody. There you go. Tell right. everybody you know. Even That's those right. that'll look at you like, why would I listen to a podcast like that? I know. I know. So <laughs> You know, that's the way customers and patients always do, right? You can't get them, you can't get them to tell anybody about you until you have a bad experience and they want to tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready to get into it? Might as well. Okay, then let's do this. It's on you now, boo. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting to see where you're going to go with it. All right, so we, we have mentioned cyber hygiene several times lately about if we would just do basic cyber hygiene it would solve a lot of our problems when it comes to all of the cyber attacks and uh, you know being down all those kind of things um so i thought maybe we should explain what we're talking about when we say that mm -hmm. yeah it, just in case everybody doesn't know what's in our heads when we say things yeah Apparently, I assume that people know things way too much when it makes complete sense to me and no one tells me that no one else knows. So now I have to assume that uh, maybe somebody would like to know more about basic cyber hygiene and what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I wash my hands before I touch the keyboard. What more do you yeah. want? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> but the uh, big thing uh you know, trying to equate 
years ago, I did a presentation where I took the, um, the guide for infection control from the CDC and turned it into a guide for cybersecurity uh, and, and talked about cyber hygiene. And I thought it was a great idea and it just really went flat, but apparently now it's catching on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take that back into play and you can look at it a couple of different ways. And I think it's important that we understand, just like we mentioned, uh, you know, the hotel and the difference in going into a, a, a space that, you know, is well cared for, one that's moderately cared for and one that's cared for very well, as well as an individual, because both apply when we're talking about cyber hygiene. You've got mm -hmm. the environment that you're in, as well as you as an individual. And we have to worry about both of them and how they're cared for. It's the love and caring of yourself and your environment. Mm -hmm. That's what cyber hygiene is all about. So we know if you don't take a bath and wash your hands and brush your teeth and please wear deodorant. <laughs> I know it's not necessarily uh, in every culture of the world, but once you learn, you might change your mind. So, uh, hey, somebody, gets, no, somebody gets you in the headlock. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let me tell you something. My, my nephew, uh, I've got several of them that are over six foot five. And, uh, one of them grew, uh, I want to say like six inches in a matter of months. He was in constantly needing food and all of that stuff but he loves me and i went from hugging him where we were kind of head to head and there was this stall in his growth pattern where i landed in his armpit every time he wanted to hug me <laughs> <laughs> and when they're growing like that and they're teenage boys i don't have to tell you having so many of them they, you can't keep them from smelling bad. And I'm like, I love you. <laughs> Give yeah, me a I'm, hug. I'm going in. I'm going in. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so it, it is, again, the reason that, uh, well, let's just say that many times there are impressions that are made by others uh, by how you take care of your surroundings and yourself. Not only does your body uh, uh, do better, but mentally you feel better if you are caring for yourself, self-care as well as your environment. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's just say that it, 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 for some people that if you meet someone, you assume that there is some sort of a, uh, an inability or an unwillingness to care for themselves if they are not keeping up with their personal hygiene in their environment. So if we look at it that way, then consider how much you are taking care of your network. Are you looking at it and your devices? Do you realize that when people see it and there's no doors on it <laughs> <laughs> and what doors are there kind of they're sitting open and the windows are hanging and uh you know no one's paid attention to the paint in years because hey they still work mm -hmm. then uh that's your environment that the uh, cyber criminals see first when they look at this place that hasn't been cared for so look around how many computers are around you in your office that uh maybe haven't been cared for very well it, let's say how many times david do you go <laughs> into a site and pull out a desktop computer that when you pull it out the entire back of it is encased in dust <laughs> yeah um, it's, it's pretty more, more often than I, I care to run into it. Yeah. Yeah. There are times where you just scrape it off before you blow it out. You know, I got, uh, yeah, I got, I got a terrible blowing out story. We had uh -oh. a, this is years ago, but we had a, a technician. I always gave the technicians 
<clears throat> a vacuum cleaner, right? <laughs> Here's a small uh, shop vac. If you run into these computers that are like that, vacuum them out. So this one technician had a bright idea that canned air would be best. And so he opens up this case and it's completely nasty with dust and, uh, you know, all these other things. We call them uh, dust bunnies and something. Uh, one time we even found a dead rat inside one. But yeah. <laughs> so the guy commences to spray in the pressured air into uh, there and the dust just filled the room, got all over everything. Yes. Uh, so it's like, no. Dude, we do not blow stuff around. We vacuum things up. Now you oh. use that for like tiny little dust particles, not like the casing <laughs> that yeah, we was... see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so definitely one of those scenarios, if you saw that an individual was coated in dust <laughs> as they walked <laughs> around, then that's what your computer is. And it comes from the outside as well as the care on the inside, just like, you know, your teeth, uh, if they're falling out. They're and covered, with guys, <laughs> they're covered with dust. Covered with dust. If you're not brushing your teeth, it's really obvious what starts to happen to them. So all of those things is it, it's really happening with your network and your computers and those kind of things. If you're not showing them love and care. Mm -hmm which is the same as, you know, your individual. So think of all of the wiring that comes hanging out and uh, where there's just random access points hanging from the ceiling and so on and so forth. All of those things, those really matter. Mm -hmm. And that's what technical people see, including the cyber criminals yep. is, I don't think it would take much to break into this house versus that one over there that is fully manicured. Everything is in place. It's taken care of regularly. Uh, it seems to have a security system at the driveway. There's a security system and cameras at the door. And then I got this rundown thing next door and they don't even see each other. They don't know they're in the same neighborhood, but the cyber criminals do. Mm -hmm. so pretty easy for me to say well i'm, I'm gonna wander in there yep now if the person going in that front door of the fancy house if the gate opens up and they're able to walk by all those cameras and that person has not uh let's just say it's really clear they may have spent the last six months without washing their hair and taking a bath and washing their hands then and they just walk in because they own the big fancy house guess what i'm gonna know i can follow them in they're gonna just lead me right in that door they're gonna take me in yeah that might be why they call these uh, network tools sniffers indeed good <laughs> thinking my man there are sniffers out there yes and they can smell you <laughs> and, and the sniffers find openings in the network. Yep. So now you're starting to feel that whole cyber hygiene thing and why it works really well as mm -hmm. examples. Yep. So what would be then the proper hygiene for managing the environment and then the individuals when it comes to cybersecurity and cyber hygiene? Mm-hmm. What do you know, Joe? We've got the managers and the people in charge of the home and the network, mm -hmm. which is the bigger company. But don't forget, you could have you. We still have to worry about the individuals at home, especially now when we realize that the edge is now the home router, as we talked about. And you have mm -hmm. to worry about gaming systems and all of that. Yeah. But first, let's talk about where you actually can control it in an office setting. Right. That's the main thing. So when you're doing that, step one, let's define what we need to protect. Because mm -hmm. if there's nothing in here, on car. Yeah. Well, here's the thing is that a lot of people assume that they don't have things that are valuable. Exactly. Uh, and that's where the, that's where the hard part is. Be Oftentimes, 
you look at data and you're like, well, this, this doesn't mean anything to anybody. So even if they get it, it's not valuable. What you right. often don't know or understand is that everything has a value to it. And sometimes you are not the target, you are the conduit. Yes. So just remember that even though your information may seem to be not valuable or common knowledge type stuff, it's easy for somebody to then use that to pivot to somebody else or even, you know, just act like they are you if they get yeah. some of your information. Yeah. And imagine this is somebody that's a criminal. And if they walked in the door looking like them, everybody be like criminal. So then they become you and everybody's like, oh, normal person. And then suddenly you are considered the criminal. So there, there's, there's a lot to worry about. Mm -hmm. So just protecting who you are is important. But all of the information that you have and you have access to and even, as David mentioned, the conduit to others, think about the access to others that you have within, what is it, maybe two degrees of separation, it could still, you know, that connection mm -hmm. could matter. So if you think, okay, this is available to everyone and everyone can see it, well, granted, there's a lot of people that are out there blasting everything they do on social media, but um, they still think that they have things that they want to keep personal. They just don't know how much they're giving away. Mm -hmm. So there's that. What if everybody sees it? What if I can never trust that this information is correct? Somebody has screwed it up, the integrity part. And that was one of the things where we went down that rabbit hole with David Ben about how horrifying that could be. Mm -hmm. And then what if you could never, ever get to it again? And you know what most people freak out about? I've lost my phone numbers. They don't care about that. I've lost my pictures. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's the big thing. I've lost my pictures. But still, there is more to it than I will never see the pictures again. Think of how if pictures matter to you, then you need to realize there's way more information there that you have that matters that much. You just don't know it. Mm-hmm. And then if it's the business, well, we know we've got accounting, we've got the core business, which is PHI in our world, the healthcare information, PHI, EHI, PII. But that is the important information along with proprietary stuff. What, what's your secret sauce? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't want to always give away all of our secret sauce. You know, you got to hire me to get my secret sauce. <laughs> uh, I'll give you a recipe, but I'm gonna leave something out or yeah. something. <laughs> I am the saucy. <laughs> <laughs> and then once you identify what those are, then you need to have a full inventory of where that information uh, that you need to protect, where it lives and breathes. Mm -hmm. So your equipment, the software that supports it, uh, those are also valuable assets. Those are your house. Yeah. And, and, and it's amazing that this process sounds awful familiar. Yeah, maybe like a, a risk analysis. Sounds like the steps to uh, start in that direction. Yeah, I do. Because the next thing you need to know is what would the impact be if those systems and data were attacked, where you could expose it to everyone or you can't trust it anymore or you lose it. Mm -hmm. That would be your risk analysis. Mm -hmm. And I, I do risk analysis. We've talked about it all the time. We do them. We just don't realize it. And it's time for us to do that in order to assess our home. And we look around and say, you know, is that floor going to fall through? <laughs> uh, um, maybe I should fix that. Uh, because I don't need uh, the top floor becoming the bottom floor all at the same time. Yeah. Donna, stand here. I'm going to go upstairs and jump on this floor. Tell me if it bends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if, you, if you're following us so far, you're already going down that rabbit hole of doing a risk analysis. So it'd be fairly easy to continue down this. Uh, we will stop there and go into the cyber hygiene piece. But just for your information, no, you're well on your way to a risk analysis at this point. 
Right. But that is what you have to do to know what you need to protect. Exactly. So now that you know what you need to protect and you've thought it through, mm -hmm. now let's talk about hygiene. Okay. So. You have to brush up and down. <laughs> <laughs> round and, and round yeah <laughs> and, and who, who teaches you how to brush your teeth who teaches you that your teeth are valuable apparently uh it was not something that everybody knew all uh years ago it was the letter people the letter people yeah okay. mr yeah. t yeah <laughs> <laughs> he had the t yeah yeah <laughs> So now that I know I got to brush my teeth, that's, that's my assessment. I'm, I'm, I'm going to brush my teeth, mm -hmm. comb my hair, wash my face and my hands, and shower, wear some do dodrant. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that the house, the roof stays up and my car is safe to drive and all those things. So, so what do you do about the places on your body that you can't reach like your back and stuff? How are you going to keep some proper cyber hygiene? For places you can't get to well there's two ways mm -hmm. one is i ask for help okay with someone who can or i <laughs> use the bear method and back up to a tree and scratch my back <laughs> and <laughs> you know and to me that's the way to go uh if if you got nothing else you you do the best you can with what you've got to work with <laughs> but so, i don't ignore the itch so we call that a compensating control exactly <laughs> uh, all right let's dive into what some of these protections are so we've identified what needs to be protected mm -hmm. now what are some things we can do to protect the things we've identified all right well we we've talked about a lot of these over and over and again but mm -hmm. this is what the hygiene is the advanced antivirus patching okay. the operating system and the applications mm -hmm. actually monitoring what's going on with them looking okay. at your logs so that i that's consider that looking in the mirror <laughs> there you go that's a good way okay. to put it there you go if i'm not looking at the logs that means you never look in the mirror mm -hmm. that means everybody else can see what's going on in your network not you that's right <laughs> yeah you, uh, and you need one of those friends that'll tell you hey you got something between your teeth right there. yeah yeah <laughs> you need that because that's your unused devices <laughs> uh I, you know uh, I, I, are you using that because you need to get it out of your teeth hold on hold on just for you donna <laughs> <laughs> uh but if you if if we get everybody to think about it this way maybe we can make progress mm -hmm. that if you're not using the software anymore and you're not you know and i'm not saying i'm great at keeping all the software but i'm constantly looking at stuff that and i load stuff to play with like you do to test it out and to mm -hmm. see if they interfere with each other so and i've got tons of apps i play with on all of my devices yeah so so here's what i do might might help somebody mm -hmm. so you know how they tell you that every time you have a time change you know to change the batteries in your um in your smoke, smoke alarm yeah, and all yeah, this kind of yeah. stuff smoke detector so which you know the other rabbit hole of that is if they get rid of the uh time change what are we going to do but anyway <laughs> Uh, so what I, I use that as an opportunity to do the spring cleaning on my computers as well. So I, I'll go in, pull up the list of programs I have, and then start cleaning those up. So at least twice a year, I know I'm, I'm cleaning out all these old programs that I've installed and I'm not using anymore. Um, and, and when it kind of going back to the patching piece, we as IT folks often tell people, especially MSPs, we come in and we sell them on patching. Um, and sometimes we say things like we patch third party applications, but you need to understand what that means because 99.9% yes. .9 of the time, they're not patching all of your applications. Right. Um, and so there's a big disconnect between we patch your computer or we patch third party applications, uh, but they're not patching everything. And so you need to know what that, uh, what that looks like so that you can make some provisions 
some compensating control to patch those things mm -hmm. that aren't being patched by your IT provider. Mm -hmm. Like when you need to scratch your back. Yes, absolutely. So yeah. um, think about those things. And, you know, you mentioned software uh, devices. I mean, even this week, um, I had a, a talk with a, a client and I'm like, <clears throat> you've got this Windows 7 machine showing up. What, what's the deal? Because <laughs> uh, I thought we were past this conversation. And like, oh, we don't use it. You said don't use it. We don't. <laughs> All right. I know, but it's still plugged into the network. I'm and still... turned on and running. Yeah, I'm still getting feedback from this device. Why is it still out there? Oh, oh, you want us to shut it down? I thought you just said, no, use it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> Throw it away. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it was a funny conversation, sort yeah. of. <laughs> oh, yeah, in, in, in some ways, right? Yes. Um, so so I, we, we mean, a, when we say uh, get rid of it, uh, or don't use that we, we literally want you to get rid of it not just leave it sitting there <laughs> uh funny stuff but uh, so we have that and then you know another thing we talk about all the time is password management uh yes. it, yeah this is one of those things where it's a challenge i don't know when the challenge or if the challenge will ever go away <laughs> but Mm -hmm. Password management is a big issue. It's a big problem to solve uh, because you have the, the management of the password, but you also had the fact that people will say, yes, I use a password manager. But then when you look at the passwords they're using, you're still knocking yourself in the head going, what are you doing? You can't use a password manager and still use password one, two, three. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The whole point of it is uh, you, you have one complex when you remember that opens the door to all the ones you don't even know because the computer made them up. Yeah. It's kind of like, go. think about it this way where you, you know, nowadays you don't really know anybody's phone number anymore. You exactly. said you had to, you had to remember everybody's phone number. Oh my now, God. now we don't have to, because we have these cell phones that keep all that information. So they basically become a phone book manager. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. So you, you don't know all the phone numbers anymore, but you know how to get into your device, which has all the phone numbers. Same concept. Yeah. So for those of you too young to remember, at one time, <laughs> you carried them here or you had a, a little, little black book. Black book. And then it was real exciting when these, uh, what were they? The Palm Pilots came out and, and things like that where, oh, I got a device that I can sync to my computer and store my phone numbers. Mm. And I'm going to carry that in my pocket. So when I go to a phone. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the, the first like push button phones that, that finally had it where you could save like three important numbers. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like I don't have to dial that anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, or shoot, even the redial. Cause you know, yeah. you and I come from the rotary phone yeah. error but yeah, the whole redial thing was like, oh my gosh, you redial the thing. Well, the fact that we still call it dial the number. That's true. Okay, so yes, that's what a password manager is. Mm -hmm. All and, right, so and, the, yeah. So the next one here, I did not call it data backup. I call it data restoration ability. Exactly. <laughs> You yes. need to test your data restoration ability um, because, you know, HIPAA says oh, something to the effect of you should be able to restore exact copies of information. So fair enough. Yeah. So you should have some way that you can ensure that you have the ability to restore your data. I don't, I'm not calling it a backup. I don't care what you call it. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we've got to ditch the backup thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because so can many times. So many times I have the conversation, people are like, yeah, we got to back up. Yeah, we got to back up. Does it work? I don't know. You never tried it. Well, then isn't it important that you can restore the data? <laughs> well, yes. Well, then mm -hmm. you're not, you're not testing the most important piece of it. <laughs> yes, I know. Back in the early days, I had to recover a, it's a long story, but the net of it is Back then, everything was still stored in ways that it wasn't just scattered all over the disk and it was in chunks. Mm. And I went in and spent an entire weekend 
reading the thing and restoring and rebuilding an index to all the data files on the disk. Mm, that sounds painful. It, it was super nerdy weekend and an exhausting one. <laughs> but so the point of being able to restore, mm. we need to come up with, it's not a backup and restore. It's just, can you restore? Yeah. Cause if right. you can restore, you have a backup. Exactly. I don't need to ask if you have a backup. Can you restore? Yep, exactly. So right. those are the questions to ask. And, and there are other questions around that. And we've had these discussions about no, understanding what re restoring means, like mm -hmm. how far back can I restore or how many copies back can I restore or how long is it going to take to restore even? Good mm -hmm. questions to ask. Yeah, it's kind of like the insurance that you get, you know, health mm -hmm. insurance and and uh, insurance for your car in your house th that's caring for those things so that if something goes wrong i can properly take care of it yeah and i always love the the people that say i need to be able to restore within minutes and then you say okay great it'll cost x you know what being down a couple of days is probably okay <laughs> 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 so you have to understand that you can have just a, a, an immaculate level of restore functionality, but it may not fit your budget. Yes. Uh, but on the other side of that, um, you know, you have to have a budget um, that can not only fit that restore, but vice versa. So if you really need it to be restored that quickly, you better find a way to afford it because mm -hmm. when you are down, it's going to cost you massively to not have the ability to restore like that. So with that in mind, we suggest in here the concept of implement a framework like Hiccup or what we often mention, you know, the standards, NIST and all those others. Mm -hmm. But the reason that we say that it's the same thing as, uh, well, I don't know, during COVID or before COVID, it probably started. Everybody was using the Marie Kondo, uh, what is it, Condo system? I mean, I know, who, but I haven't watched it, but my friends are like, oh, this is how you fold things and all, you know, but it's systems in, uh, in that are create standards mm -hmm. that you follow that makes things more effective, efficient, neat, and organized. Yep. That's what frameworks are. Mm -hmm. And that way you are accounting for all the things. And if you can't account for them, you either get rid of them or you find a way to make them functional and properly cared for. Yeah. That's what the frameworks are for. The great thing about frameworks too, is that it eliminates the need for you to say, what should I be thinking about? Or mm -hmm. what, what have I missed here? Because you've got other people that are, you know, parts of huge groups that are coming together and they're, and they're figuring those things out for you. And then they're putting them, into a document so that you don't have to go through and spend massive amount of time. Massives. Is that a word? <laughs> you don't have to spend a massive amount of time trying to figure it out on your own. You've got a framework to follow. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and, you know, these things are those systems and now you still have to figure out, am I missing any of my own stuff? But once I know it, these frameworks help you figure out all the things to do to protect them. And that, that's an important thing. The uh, limit admin access, that's kind of like, uh, I don't know, limiting, you know, that's your security control. Yeah. Who are you going to let in the house? Right. How many people are you going to give your house key to? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You got the heat and air guy that needs to come over. Are you going to give him the house key or are you going to ask um, your, your brother to come over and let this person in? Um, mm -hmm you know, versus giving them the house key, for example. And are you going to let them go everywhere in the house once you let them in unabated? Or are you going to follow them and make sure they stay in a certain area of the house that you only give them the access they need? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're working like on that. these analogies today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it is amazing how a lot of this, you know, I mean, it easily goes into quote unquote real world examples you just mm -hmm. have to think of it that way 
Yeah, and and I think a lot of it is because you turn on the computer, and as much as everybody complains today, you turn on the computer, it works, and that's why you notice it when it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Since Don and I come from a time where it's like you got to configure the COM ports and the IRQ to get it connected to the dial-up. <laughs> yeah, like, what? So you got to open it up and move those little. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the jumps. Uh, why am I losing? Uh, yeah, jumpers. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, dip you, switches and all dip that switches there you go i gotta change the dip switches and it, it, oh it's talking to that kind of computer open it up and yeah. turn these little tiny switches there was a time when you could hear the internet before you connected to it yeah <laughs> it actually makes a sound <laughs> yeah. so <laughs> yeah it, it things have changed a lot and understanding that when it just works often you forget about it if it doesn't require that kind of care and feeding then you forget about it can't forget about it it has to be cared for which is why we have the next suggestion which is documented scheduled review process yeah because if you can't don't document it, it if you don't document it it didn't happen can't and if prove you it. don't and if you don't schedule it it won't get done <laughs> Exactly. If it's not so, on the calendar. Yeah. So I don't want to say just document a review process because you were like, oh yeah, I have one of those. When was the last time you did it? I, I, five years ago? <laughs> no, it has to be a documented and scheduled. And so, I would suggest that you make a list of what you're going to review. Yeah. Because so what you happened, don't have to remember. And, and the reason this is the last one that we're going to talk about under protections is because I've been in environments, and I'm sure you have too, Donna, where you ask people these questions. Do you have advanced AV? Do you do patching? Do you do all this other stuff? And they say yes. But then when you go looking, it's not there. Mm-hmm. And you're like, no, this is not here. What do you mean it's not there? It was there two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, you obviously have not scheduled a documented review process to happen yeah. here because you thought you had it or you had it at some point and it's no longer there or no longer working. <laughs> Yeah, no uh, one's looking. Yeah. Hello. And so you, you gotta tell you gotta check these things out because I can't tell you how many times I've run across uh antivirus programs or security programs that are no longer functioning because mm-hmm. they didn't get updated or they're broken, uh mm-hmm. backups that are no longer working, you know, all these things that somebody had at some point that were working, but because nobody's going back and checking, they're not working anymore. Oh, and somebody got an alert somewhere. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, but they I'll, didn't I'll get to it later. <laughs> or I don't know what that means. Click. <laughs> yeah. It's down there in the corner. Yeah. It's down there. Uh, or the one I love, but my IT guy told me not to click on anything. <laughs> okay. But um when you start seeing something about your protection has expired, at least let us know. <laughs> yeah, just tell somebody. Yeah. Don't click on it, but tell somebody to look. Yeah. Yeah. Which fortunately we don't have that problem with clients because we manage everything. But back in the day, before we did that, it was, um, you know, you had to have people look, tell me if you see something that, you know, we need to know about, but there are still other things we don't often manage that people need to, to tell us about, you know, you're getting a, an alert from your payment card provider or your bank or something like that. You know, we need to know about it because it may have something to do with your, your network or a user. Well, and keep in mind that there are still people that don't have IT companies managing everything like you do. Mm -hmm. All IT companies don't manage to the level that you do. I know. I know. Nor do all IT companies understand HIPAA very well. Oh, please. I don't want to go down to that story, but. uh, Somebody tried to tell David about HIPAA. (laughs) Somebody tried to tell me about HIPAA this week, too. (laughs) Like Let me that. just say, let's get it out there. Maybe we'll do an entire episode on it. But a business associate agreement does not give you unrestricted access to any and all PHI of the covered entity to which you have a business associate agreement. Okay. <laughs> and signing a business associate agreement doesn't mean that is your relationship. If you just decide you want access, but there is no actual service involved. That does not allow it either. Just getting it out there. Yeah, uh, we may use this for as a as a learning 
um, opportunity in the, the in the future. Moment. There you go. We may we, we may do that, but yes. So moving along, as we digress, after we talk about this review, so now these are the things, the protections that are in place in the environment. What about the individual's care? The oh yeah, individual. This is fun. Yeah. This is fun. So, you know, we always talk about the, we have to provide training that we need to do the training and you need to do that. Each of us as individuals, it's everybody's responsibility to actually take the time and interest to learn these things because it does impact all of us. Mm -hmm. So whether you're at home working where it really does matter, even if you're not connecting to an office, at your home, it does matter that you worry about cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. We've had plenty of discussions where uh, that something at home causes a, you know, one day I took something, I, uh, the camera card, and I took it to the home computer, plugged it in and took pictures that I'd taken at, a, at the office for something else. And then that car got infected because I used it on the home computer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's little bitty mistakes like that that cause the problem. But the bottom line is we're all too connected today to not get better educated. Yeah. yeah. And I highly recommend, and, and we'll have a link to it, the Stop, Think, Connect campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's some good information for individuals and home networks for sure. Yeah, it, it, you can go there to the toolkit and it's like information based on the audience and it's, you know, mm -hmm. children and teachers and parents and older Americans and young professionals. And I mean, it's all broken down and you click on it and it says, OK, here's some things for you to learn. Oh, let's talk about online gaming and the things that we need to learn and some tips that uh, we should keep in mind when we're doing these things. Uh, mobile banking. Let's learn about that. There are plenty of ways to get the information if you are willing. And that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We need you to be willing to wash your face, clean your hair, maybe even, I know it's way out there, wear some clean clothes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, that's that's, that's the kind of thing that we're talking about with cyber hygiene. It gets down to the individual, not the organization, but also the individual. Yep. And if you and if you need somebody to help you clean behind your ears, that's when you hire people like me. <laughs> <laughs> ah. uh, but you know, we can offer all the training in the world, and we can try different things like clearly what we're doing here mm -hmm. but if people do not choose to participate i yep. choose not to participate one of my friends had a kid that i choose not to participate wait what <laughs> uh, or even or even worse um you have some you find somebody that will tell you what you want to hear <laughs> it's like all right, I've got these people telling me that I don't smell very well, um, but I, I'm going to keep asking because sooner or later, somebody ain't going to hurt your feelings exactly. and they're not going to tell you. They're, oh, no, you're fine. See, I'm good. Mm -hmm. No, don't keep walking around looking for people to tell you what you want to hear. It's mm -hmm. like the, the there's a great movie and there's so many things in that movie. And I, I'm like I'm wanting to laugh right now just thinking of watching it. Waking Ned Divine. And if you haven't seen that and the guy that's the hog farmer trying to get rid of the smell of the hogs <laughs> throughout the entire movie, uh, it, it, it's all these different soaps, but he cares about it because the woman he's in love with says, no, you smell like hogs. <laughs> it, if you haven't seen the movie, great movie, just to catch the motorcycle scene with the naked guy. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's great it's a great movie and there's so and don't miss the ending either it's great but it's the same concepts of don't go around waiting until you get the answer that you want you know if the room full of people and 80 percent of them tell you there's a problem and 20 percent don't but guess what the 20 percent 
haven't smelled you. <laughs> but 80% have. Maybe they had COVID and they ain't, they ain't smelling nothing right now. Right. I know. <laughs> so there's a lot of reasons. I mean, it's pollen season. People are stopped up. Yeah. It's all kind of stuff. But don't don't just say, well, so-and-so told me I don't have to worry about it. You do. We all do. And, oh, it's too complicated for me to have a password on my phone. It's not. Yeah. You need it. And, yeah, you know, and, and you need to get educated on all the scams that are out there. Mm -hmm. Because that, that, like I talked about the, with Dave Bittner's, one of the podcasts he's on is uh, Hacking Humans. If you listen to Hacking Humans, just pick a handful of episodes, two or three. And you don't realize there is a lot going on out there that you don't know about that it never occurred to you. That should be evidence enough that you need to pay attention. Mm -hmm. Yep. So educate yourself and then pick and choose the things that we talked about that apply to your home network. Yep. So I got a, I got a good um, story that's unfolding for me this week. Oh, so we detail. have a we have a new client that's an insurance uh, agency, and they're getting all their cybersecurity stuff in order and all that. And um, they sent me an email yesterday, and it is a letter from a software vendor that um, they sell the software into insurance agencies. And the letter says, "We take your security seriously." Oh, <laughs> You know where this is going, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> we that had a means breach. There's a problem. We had a breach. Um, and that breach uh has has touched you. <laughs> uh some of your people, some of your folks have caught up in this into this breach. And um oh. and so you know, the guy I haven't spoken with him yet. We have a meeting next week, but he's like, I'm doing all this stuff to bolster my security and to do things right in this dumb third-party vendor has a breach and now i've got to deal with that <laughs> i'm like yes yes supply you do supply chain supply chain yeah i said but think but remember this when you start telling your clients about this they're going to question what you are doing to protect them so at least you can say now i'm doing all these things and it still happened but it wasn't because we didn't try and we're not taking our obligation seriously it's still going to suck for you, but it's a whole lot better than you what position you were in a few months ago. Yeah, we're not ignoring it at all, but that doesn't mean that nothing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, there's you can take really good care of yourself and still have health problems. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, again, that's something you have to think about. You can you could be doing everything tip top, dotting your I's, crossing your T's and you could still still have an incident where it's going to affect you in a negative way, but you have to consider how it's going to look if you're doing nothing or little versus you're doing all these things right. And it still happened mm -hmm. because if you're telling me you're not doing much of anything, if, if I'm not fully educated on what's going on, my thought is the third party vendor breach is probably due to something you didn't do. I'm going to probably connect those things together. Yeah. And so you've got some, some brand damage you've got to deal with. Well, and the other thing is, you know, in the world we live in today, we have to start asking more questions about the vendors we're using mm -hmm. and how they're protecting our business and our data. And what was the 500 million, they scraped information from publicly available information, scraped it mm -hmm. from LinkedIn and have created these databases that are now for sale with 500 million people in them. Yeah. LinkedIn or Facebook? Mm, maybe Facebook. Yeah, the, the recent maybe. one. Yeah, so I just <clears throat> saw it. Yeah. But for some reason, I was thinking LinkedIn, but maybe Facebook. Yeah, I think it was Facebook. But yeah, so they can get all that information. So you've got to do your part. If everybody's doing their part, we'll have less issues to worry about. Do your part. Be cyber smart. <laughs>
<laughs> on that note that is our show for today folks here's, here's donna <laughs> <laughs> she's taking over my role <laughs> well, at least you didn't do the womp, 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 womp. yeah no kidding uh so remember to follow us and share us out on your favorite social media site even if it's been breached <laughs> right it's on our podcasting app thanks again for listening and we'll catch you next week have an amazing time with the rest of your week. So remember, for Don and myself, HIPAA is not about compliance. It is about patient care. <laughs>